We are back. Episode 12. Sheffield. Sheffield. Sheffler. Do you forget your own name? I was going to plug the podcast name, which is Chef's Kiss. Okay. Um, so fuck that up. Chef's Kiss, episode 12. Been 12 episodes. Pretty exciting. No big deal. Uh, it's me, Peter, a.k.a. Chef, with John Lelogia. What's up, John? Thank you, Chef. What's going on, man? Uh, you're really, you're really leaning into the girl dad thing. Is that shirt? Dad, Did you see the it? girls. Yeah, I can see your shirt. Dog. Dog. Love it. Dad of girl. Apparel. My cousin, okay. my cousin got it for me. That's um, awesome. It's, I guess it's a company. I don't know if you can see the outline, but yeah, you see like the little girl. I see it. With the dad. Or Very the dog. nice. Yeah. So you're so. Le- leaning it. Yeah, because you got a you got a daughter. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I have a Cubs, you know, <clears throat> ro- uh, rocking, rocking Cubs. Uh, just uh, acquired uh, Jamie Candelario from the Nationals. Yeah. Which is, is about as big a news as you're going to get uh, from baseball. But we were recently on vacation. I was in Chicago at a family wedding, had a great yeah. time, went to an amazing restaurant, uh, went to Ohio Street Beach, had a couple of drinks, relaxed. I fell asleep. I'm unbelievably sunburned. Like Ooh. it hurts everywhere. Um, but I think because I don't know if your daughter has a sound machine, but yes. my son does. And it, it's like the wind and crashing waves. And I guess that's just what I heard. And I, I passed out. I fell asleep. Yeah. I think it's one of those innate things, just like a uh, water falling or like yeah. rainfall. It's um, lets people know that predators are no longer hunting, something like that. Science. Yeah, it's science. But either way, I had a great weekend. You went on vacation. Tell me about your vacation. I am brown now. I have passed the burning stage. I um, have like two more days, and then I'll be then I'll be tan. But I am. Oh, dude! Burned. And I shaved. I shaved my belly and my chest. Underrated. Let me just tell you. Underrated. Wait, what do you mean? Like you look good or what? You look feel better? good. I don't know about look good, but feel good. I have so much back and chest hair. It would take it. Would, it takes yeah. so long, and then I've, I itch like crazy. I tried I it felt once. Like in a high break. schooler. I yeah. felt like a high schooler. I felt like asking my wife to prom. You know. You just shaved your belly, and that's it. Belly, uh, titty hair, and then I have back wings. Um, they're I like, have hair everywhere. There, there's no part of my yeah. body where like I don't have hair. It just it. It's not a t- it's it's not sustainable to try to keep that you know trimmed. I just let it go. Yeah, I don't have uh, that kind of issue. Um, I'm more I so do. more like strands, strag, straggly. When it gets wet, it gets like matted down. Yours gotcha. is more like a sweater, you know, like a nice yeah. Cosby sweater. Yes, very much, very much, very curly, fluffy, one hundred percent. Yeah, pubes um, essentially. Essentially, yeah. Uh, I will never. We have uh, a white bathroom floor. Never again. That is a mistake. Because oh yeah, it's just you stand out. All of, yeah, you can see it everywhere. Like it's like never chocolate again. chip cookie dough. I'll next our next house will not have white bathroom floors. That is a guarantee. Um, so where'd you go on vacation? Uh, we went to Sea Isle City, so the Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore was fun, man. Uh, there's like a lot of Jersey Shore towns. This one is just really nice. Uh, my in-laws, they get a nice big house for That's everybody. Awesome. We stay there. Uh, we're a half a block from the beach. Sweet. And it's it's the best case scenario of going to the beach. Like, I don't like going to the beach. Me neither. I hate I'm, not, the, I'm not a big I, fan of sand. hate the sand, dude. It's in the, It's been in the back of my molars for like a fucking week, right? Ugh. And it's just grinding. Yeah. So not a huge fan of the sand. Bringing down coolers, umbrellas, chairs, all that kind of shit. But... If you're going to do it, this is the best case scenario, and it's growing on me. So, nice, dude. Yeah, Sweet. that was uh, that was my week. It was it was great. Worked a little bit, and then um, had a lot of fun. Spent time with the family, the baby, the wife. It was all good. Fantastic. You're the all American dad. Um, what I'm going for. So, what I want to talk about first is the NFL throwback uniforms in this upcoming season, and there are a lot, lot of them. Ones. So, I'm going to share my screen, and go over them because some of them are amazing some of them not so great but i know you want to talk about there's a lot of happening in philly right now with the kelly green jersey so why don't you talk about that yes 
Yeah, so today it was the release of the Kelly Green jerseys for the Philadelphia Eagles. They got um, all like the photos and stuff were released early on the internet. Someone leaked them or whatever. But here's the thing. So I live right outside of Philly now in South Jersey. And people get... Um, People get a lot of shit for being Philly fans, you know, scumbags, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Throwing um, what snow and things. Yeah, like that Santa was like Claus. in the 60s. That was in the 60s, too. It Regardless, still whatever. You're, gonna, Here's you're the never going to live that down. I'm going to argue is the passion from these people is second to none. Okay. Name me another fan. These people were up at 3 30 in the morning in line to get these new jerseys, these Kelly green jerseys. They were at the link three 30 in the morning. There was a bunch of coverage from it. I got videos. I'll show it to you. I'm sure you saw some on the internet today, but all these people in line at, they went to the pro shops just to get these jerseys because they love the team so much or so, something's, you know, seriously wrong with them mentally. If they're getting up I'm, at 2 AM to get a Jersey. Sure. Yeah, but there's so many of them. It's just the passion for these people. You got to respect it. I do you respect just, it. That's amazing. Gotta, I mean, it's amazing. You don't have to like them. Like, there's a ton of scumbags from like, especially the Pennsylvania side. That's one thing I learned. All the white trash from Pennsylvania. Who boy, they are gross. But they are a passionate fan base, man. They are a passionate fan base. You got to respect it, right? It's awesome. I I totally respect it. That's, and I'm not surprised at all. But I am I am a little bit surprised that people are flipping out about these jerseys when if you go back to 2010, Kevin Cobb, because I remember the Packers played them in their Super Bowl winning year, they had mm. these jerseys. This is not like the first time they've used these throwback jerseys. Go back to 2010, Packers. I think Michael Vick started it, like, was a, maybe a quarterback for them, but he, he was. They, had, they, had the same, they had the same jerseys. Sure, they have, Why are people freaking about freaking out about it now? Um, well, I mean, they had throwback jerseys um, released for other teams. Is this uh, like the Randall well. Cunningham? Like, yeah, throwback. Okay. Yeah, th- those Kelly Green, but okay. I'm sure they were brought back before, just like you know others, like the Packers. The Packers have those ones with like the circle with the number on it, right? Acme Packers. They're gross. Like, they're like brown and yellow. I hate they are. those. Yeah. I hope I never see those again. Although last year they did, or the last couple of years they've done like green, all green and yellow, which has been pretty sweet. Sure. Yeah. So That's yeah, they've been they just made up. They've been around before, but yeah. um, yeah. Let's they look get cool. In, let's get let's into, get into it. The, let's get into it. So there, there are a lot of this year, and I. And I really credit the NFL for like leaning into this uh, because um, there's just so much great stuff. So, um, so we're gonna so ranking some of the best ones. So the Browns, uh, these are awesome. I think these are sweet. Okay. Do you like them? I do. The white? But I think I'm sick. I'm pretty sure they just ripped off the Bengals. If you remember, the Bengals yeah. all whites are pretty close. And whatever, who cares if everyone wants a, a white one? The, the white out just looks sick, right? It looks good. It looks. Oh, I think it looks awesome. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. All right, so that's the Browns. Uh, Vikings. Eh. I feel like the Vikings is like a Where's Waldo or like a Show Me the Difference. Can you, you see know, my remember, screen? Remember? No, I can't. Damn. Oh, but remember in the office when when Pam hands Creed those two identical photos and she said, "Find the seven differences." Yeah. And they're the same photo. That's how I feel about the Vikings jerseys. If I, am I wrong? You're not wrong. Okay. Uh, here. So this is. I don't know. I don't know if this constitutes as a throwback. What's different about it? I know the matte helmets, I think. The matte purple looks pretty cool. I like that. Um, but in regards to everything else, I'll be honest with you, man. I can't pick out the differences. I don't think this constitutes as a as a throwback at all. Uh, so that's kind of disappointing. So probably no for that one. Uh, next up, the Jets. Now, this is pretty dope. Also, they're going to be in Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks next week. We will be doing a recap pod every Wednesday after it airs on Tuesday. But um, this is pretty tight. I love the green socks. Can you tell me the name of it too, John? Uh, did you have the name? I think it's called 
Oh, what do you mean? The, they have a name for it. It's like the All Pro Whites. Is that what it's called or something like that? Maybe. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I believe no, they no, were no, called. No, it's fine. They were called there's, something. There's Rogers just throwing a dime. God, yeah, I'm gonna no miss coverage. that. God, I, I just I can't I can't believe he's not. Regardless, a anymore. regardless of whatever, I think they're called like All Pros or something. They have like a All World. I don't know. Oh, look, another dime. Yes, another white jersey looks clean. Yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, So the Jets uh, moving right along. This is interesting, but I think we've seen this before with Brewers. And most of these teams are only wearing them two weeks. Right. One or two weeks. Correct. Which is kind of disappointing with a 17-game season. So this is the old school one. I think we've seen these with Brady before, but yeah. So this is nothing really new there. Those are a win. I like those. Those are cool. And that is also, um, they wore those. When the Bears beat them mistaken. in the Super Bowl. Correct. Yeah. I knew that's where your head was going because it's literally the right. only Super Bowl you guys have ever had. Yeah, exactly. You got to hang on to something. Dude, right? they freaked out, by the way. Let's just, well, one, I am. I think these might be my favorite. Like, the, the yeah. cream, so, cream, like, how sick is this? So good. Like, I am so happy they're bringing these back. Yeah, they are those, awesome. Those pirate helmets, like just a pirate, is just such a great... and, and the colors, I, like the creamsicle yeah. and with the like dark red or orange. I think it's sick. It's awesome. They have it on the face mask too. The creamsicle yeah. orange on the face mask. I know we were talking about the bears, but I guess so. They do the NFL Top 100. This is the first time since they've been doing the NFL Top 100 that a Bears quarterback has cracked the Top 100. And Justin Fields was like, I don't know, 60, 70 something. But that's something. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I believe that when you're a Bears fan long enough, you understand that your offense and your quarterbacks are never, never the the focal point of your team. We usually just have a, a staunch defense. Yeah. And it kind of t- carries you to where we need it to go. So that doesn't surprise me. Right. But um i believe he may throw four thousand yards this season we'll see yeah that's what he said his words not mine so i believe him he, houston texans are going full oilers like they're even doing i think the helmets like the houston oilers uh so like throwback warren moon earl campbell that's gonna be sick now john the titans are wearing these the tennessee titans and not the houston texans are you serious yeah what bizarre right they were the Houston. You are players. you are correct, sir. It is the Tennessee I, Titans. Yes, that makes and absolutely I mean, no sense. I mean, Derrick Henry's going to look phenomenal in those. Well, he did. We saw the photo. Oh, oh dude, he looked yeah. sick. He had like the red, the red, uh, like armbands. That was awesome. Yeah, that was sick. But yeah, a little bizarre that the Texans aren't going to be the ones uh, wearing them. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite get it. Um, but it is sweet, and I love the throwback Oiler. Again, the baby blues and the red. Yeah, baby blues just always smack, dude. Dude, no and Denard Hopkins. That's that. I love that helmet. I think it's sick. That's awesome. Big fan of these. Big, big fan yeah. of these. Um, don't under, really understand why it's. Uh... Oh, actually, no, they're not my number one. I'll t- we're we're getting to my number one, which actually has these ranked. Uh, the number one ranking uh, on this. Um, is my personal number one ranking, and I've t- I think I, we talked about it on our previous pod. What's that? So, well, we'll get to it. But just little – so you're right. These Kelly Green ones, the ones that they wore in 2010 with, like, Kevin Cobb and the Packers beat them, these were different because they didn't have the eagle on the side. These are the Randall Cunningham ones. Sure. So, so they are they are different. I understand. These are sick. Yeah. These are awesome. The number one jersey that I I have been since they've been doing throwbacks I have been talking about it forever, um, and they're doing a great job on social uh, promoting it. But the number one uh, throwback jersey is drum roll, Seattle, dude. Yeah. How sick are those jerseys? I've thought about this yeah. forever. Like going back to like Rick Meyer, Steve Largent, like. These are amazing. 
I'm so happy they're going back to these. The blue is perfect. It's a pure blue. The silver helmet, I think, really is what sets it. The silver yes. helmet. Yes. Um, and DK Metcalf is going to look like a monster. Oh, my God. He looks like a dude. He looks John, like a dude. why do we like these so much? Is it a nostalgia thing? I, I think, think so, too. Um, nostalgia? Yeah. Yes. Nostalgia is one of the most powerful tools used in media. I'm sorry, marketing as well. So I think this is definitely one of the plays. 100%. First of all, the jerseys are cool. Second of all, it's yes, it's a nostalgia play. So we remember these. Um, we remember these jerseys growing up. It's it's a reminder of our childhood. Um, I remember when Tampa used a creamsicle jerseys. I remember, you know. Uh, Seattle having this playing in the kingdom on that like rock hard AstroTurf. Um, I remember the, you know, a little bit of the Houston Oilers. Like I remember this. So um, to bring it back is it's very impactful. It take it, it takes you back. That's why music is so popular. A song you hear can bring you back to like high school, like immediately. You're like, Oh my God, I remember exactly where I was, what I was doing when I heard this song. So I think these jerseys, Look cool, number one, but also huge nostalgia play. It brings it back to the '90s when you and I grew up. So I'm so happy they're doing them. I think, and I think Seahawks are only using it for one game um, in December, are they? November, I believe. Let's check. Which is bizarre. I don't know why you would have. Why would you just? Why would them? you have? Like same thing with the creams of Colts. It's like I would have it every. I would have it every year. Um, yeah. Oh, this is sick. Have you seen this? Yeah, that was the promo. This was awesome. NFL Blitz, N64, Kingdom, Gary Payton. Coming in, yeah, flex. I just want to win, yeah. LA BB, who we running with, yeah. Two, two, three, three, I'm on 10 again, yeah. State your name. Big Ben dope on flame. I just switched the lanes. Damn, he did it again. I just flipped the pain. Yeah. Dipping and dipping and dab on everything. Swimming, you sick in the way. Like, they really went for it, dude. Yeah. Typical 90s kitchen. A waffle. Got Mariah Carey, the headphones. They're going to sell a ton of those. They this whole thing was absolutely brilliant. Grunge. Sick, dude. Dude, that's amazing. That's amazing. Whoever came up with that was a genius. I, that that's like the best marketing you can get. I wish, oh God, I wish baseball would do something like that. And they just, they just suck. They just, they're just really bad at marketing. I could have came up with that. There's, oh my God, there's um, you and I alone could come up with like ten ideas probably in an hour that we could 100%. immediately enact on some, like. Here's a storyboard. Here's what you do. We could do one for the Cubs. We could do it for any most major league baseball teams, and it would be amazing. Playing on the nostalgia factor. You know what I mean? Like Cubs, like oh, yeah. get Sandberg in there old style. Like there's so many different things that you could do. You know, like the 80s music, Van Halen, whatever. Like it, it would be like so easy, and yet MLB just doesn't do it. Uh, it's very disappointing. Yeah. John, I think I was upset today because of uh, nostalgia. Let's um, hear it. When Paul Ru- Paul Rubens passed. Pee Wee Herman. AKA the man who created, concocted the character Pee Wee Herman. And I saw that he died and I wanted to, I, I wrote like a brief little blog. Like I, I'm so fucking busy, dude. So like I don't have tons of time to like write a ton, but I wanted to write something just because I felt like. He, I mean, he died of cancer. Like he fought cancer silently by for himself. a long time. Yeah, for yeah, a couple of years. And I just thought it was funny, that, not funny, but like weird that a character that's so loud, in your face, obnoxious, the man who played him, like suffered, well, like fought cancer silently by himself. Never came out into the media. Never said anything about that. And yet, the character he played was very, you know, outlandish and silly. So I thought that was. Um, yeah, like I was upset today. Like I, I was, we were talking a little bit before. Like, you know how many times I watched Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Like, 
me and my brother could recite that movie word for word. Large Marge, yeah. to the tequila scene. I mean, yeah. everything was, it's just, Pee-wee's yeah. Playhouse He's, was a show. Just, pop culture. Yeah, icon. Pee-wee's Playhouse was a show that I would watch all the time. And then when he got busted in that like peep show theater or whatever, when and then did, they took him yeah, off the air, was. I like was devastated. I cried as a child because I, I would watch him every day. I was just absolutely devastated. And Pee-wee's Big Adventure is hilarious. And to create a character, summoning something out of nothing, like creating your own IP by yourself, like, you're, I mean, you're a content creator, like, and to just have something so unique and to own it is, a, is just, he was so unique and so funny and so weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I, right. It just, that's what I appreciate about him was he was, you know, unafraid to just be himself and be stupid and weird and silly and, you know... He really didn't give a shit what anyone thought. He's like, this is what I think is funny, and I'm going to go do it. And if, and if it gets an audience, great. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And he amassed – not only they, when you do something like that, you get an audience, but not only that, you get a very loyal audience. Um, mm-hmm. And then also, too, he was a, he was a great actor. Like if you, in the, I don't know if you've seen the movie Blow with Johnny Depp where he's a Blow. cocaine and, – yeah. and Paul Rubens is like his partner, and he's – Nothing like Pee Wee Herman, but he's a really great actor and playing it um, very grounded. And you're shocked that you're like, I can't believe this is Pee Wee Herman who's in this role. Um, and he's phenomenal. He's he's a drug dealer. He's he like starts selling marijuana with George Young, who's the character of Johnny Depp. And they eventually escalate to cocaine and is one of like the biggest cocaine distributors in like the late '80s and and uh, '90s. But um, to, How about Mystery Men? What? Mystery Men. Did you I ever have not see that? seen that. Was oh, he good in that? He plays the, the spleen. Yeah, well, I'll have to tell you about it. It's like a, a stupid superhero movie, but yeah. Uh, and there's, I was trying to, like, how do you explain to someone, if someone came from another planet and was like, who's Pee Wee Herman? Like, how do you explain who Pee Wee Herman yeah. is? You know what I mean? It was kind of like, I was like, how do you, like, what is exactly. he? What is he? And I think that's like, that's he was doing art. He was doing comedy f- for himself. He was. He, I think he was doing stuff to amuse him. I don't think he cared about an audience. And I think artists like that, like that's when you create your best stuff. I mean, the show. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. Like, how do you explain that show to somebody else? You you, right. you can't. It's literally impossible. Eric Andre. Yeah, or Eric Andre, one hundred percent. Like, you may not like. Just they're doing what they think. The what they thing. think is funny, yeah. I'm reading a book right now. I talked about my other podcast by Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin is a nine-time Grammy winner. He worked with Mary J. Blige, Jay-Z, like uh, System of a Down, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, a bunch of a variety of different bands, and he talks about creativity, and and he essentially said, he's like, m- making art, he goes, making it for anyone else is a waste of your time. Like, what the audience wants is the best thing they can get. And so in service to the audience, you have to like it. Like in comedy, you know, forget about this demographic. Like what do you think is funny? And that's the only thing that matters. And if it catches on, great. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. It might not be the right time. So much of that is out of your control. All you do is listen to your voice, do what you think is good, do what you think is funny, um, try to do it to the best of your ability, and then let and they'll let the universe take over. Um, and that's when you get unique people like Pee Wee Herman that can create not just that character, but that whole world, which is so bizarre. And parents were probably like, this is so stupid. Like, why is why is my child so obsessed with it? Uh, and it's because it's tapping into that childlike quality. It's like, it, this is unique and it's silly and it's something different. I think... I think that's why you're starting to see Marvel movies start to tank. Like people are tired of the same regurgitated IP bullshit. It's starting sure. to become wearisome. People want original content. They want original yeah. ideas. They want something new. They don't want something derivative that came from another comic book or some or some previous IP. Um, sure. John, that's why I like A24 Perfect. films. You know, the production the production company, A24, yeah. the best. As far as art, film, creativity, 
I don't want that regular story arc. I watch movies with my wife sometimes, and I can tell you they're going to have a fight right now. They're going to break up, and then they're going to come It's the same fucking bullshit. A24, I don't, you know, you don't know the ending kind of just like will end. Yeah. There's no resolution, that kind of stuff. Because, yeah, in real life, there's not always happy endings. There's not always resolutions. It doesn't have to follow an arc all the 100%. time. 100%. And I, 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 it, totally. And I, I think what, what you're seeing now is like, you know, back in the day, you know, a network television would be like, would order like 22 episodes. And the content creator would be like, all right, shit, I have to fill 22 episodes. Well, now... It's in the hands of the creator. Like Mike White created the White Lotus and he's like, or Ricky Gervais too. Like, he's like, I'm, this is, this is the piece and it's seven episodes and that's it. And that's the story. And there's going to be no filler episodes. You know what I mean? Like, this is the story that I wrote and I created and it doesn't fit your model of 10 episodes or 22. It's six, it's eight, but that's it. Because this is the story, and it it's such a it's it's such a better way to create content. You're like, this is it, and you like it or you don't. But this book I'm reading, Rick Rubin, he's just he's just like the what the only job you have is to show up every day, create content that you think is good and that you think is funny and that you like because. If you like it, someone else will. Don't ever create content to service someone else because it it's it will water it down. He goes, I've seen it time and time again. He goes, the best stuff ever um, has been something that why like what is something inside you is telling you to do this. Like when I wrote my book, right. I was like, this is my story. Here's here's what happened to me and and here's my philosophy on it and this is what I think and like it or not like that's the way that's the way I see it and it has to do with vision as well yeah. John when you have a vision nobody else can see no. it that's why it, it like, might, I might I not even make sense to he says it might not even make sense to you at the time certainly it won't make sense to anybody else but it might not even make sense to you he goes but your job is to listen to that voice and act on it like okay, this is telling me to do this. I'm going to create this or I'm going to do this podcast or I'm, I'm going to write this book or I'm going to write this script or I'm going to do this video. Oh, I have a funny thought of what I could do, something with Joe Burrow or mm -hmm. you know, the thing you did with Mahomes' family. You're like, oh, this is Mahomes' portrait. And then you, 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 know, you Photoshopped, what was it, Burrow and Allen has right. his two children. You know, like right. It's just probably a thought that popped in your head. You probably saw the portrait and you're like, oh, that's funny. You're like, I'm just going to do that. And that's all. That's that, that's it. Right. And it was. It was very, It is very funny. It's a simple idea. It's, a, it's just a twist. Um, and again, you're letting the audience discover it. You're not, you're not force feeding it. You're like, oh, it's a great family photo. And then you look closer. You're like, oh, right. my God, that's great. Because he, he does. And then also letting them decide, yes. oh, like, is that funny? Or, oh, no, that's stupid. Um, that's what you and think like, it's yeah, funny. Them... If you had that thought in your head, you probably saw the Mahomes family photo, and you're like, "I got an idea. This, this is yeah. what I'm gonna do. It's great." Right. Well, it all comes. Let's see. Royals. Jose Cuevas to the Cubs. Oh, Jose Cuevas. That guy was a. Um, he just got traded to the Cubs from the Royals. Um, if I'm, I'm, I think that's how you say his last name, Cuevas. Okay. Uh, C U A S. He used to work for FedEx. I did a story on him last year, um, and he worked for FedEx. Um, but we can get into. Oh that, yeah, uh, for story. Nelson Velasquez. Um, yeah, they just Quas, acquired yeah, him. I think it was Quas. Um, but yeah, just to end real quick, John. Yeah, it's just about like the vision, and that's one thing like my dad taught me, and is saying like, don't ever try and justify what you're doing to anyone else because they don't have your vision. They don't see like, and I know that like I know where I'm trying to go and the things that I'm trying to do. So I don't expect other people to understand that. It's okay. Because you don't have that. Of vision, course. And you know? it's okay. It's totally fine. Like some people like my stuff, some people don't. But my job is to listen to what my inner, my instincts and what my voice is telling me to do um, <clears throat> because, and do stuff that I, that I'm proud of that I think is funny. Um, and he is like, he goes, in the universe, and then he goes, and then you, the universe takes over. It may, may not be the right time for your idea, or your content, and then maybe later it will be. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. some, you'll see a movie.
come on Netflix and it'll be like trending on Twitter. And then you'll be like, wow, like this movie's awesome. And then you're like, how did I miss it? It came out in 2014. You know what I mean? And then it gets this whole new yeah. resurgence. Um, sure. But it, it, it goes back to like, if you, if you do something for you and you really like it um, and you have strong convictions for it, other people will, will like it too. If it's personal for you, it's going to be personal for someone else because you're, a human being. My favorite being authentic. authentic. My favorite, my favorite, uh, ep, uh, my favorite drama TV show is Mad Men, and there's a part where like Elizabeth Elizabeth Moss is like a young copywriter, and Don Draper is played by John Hamm. They're like talking together, and she's like, "How are you?" He's like, I'm "Obviously, a very successful ad man." She goes, "How how are you so good at this? Like, how do you know what the client wants? Like, you, you're just an amazing creative director." tell me how you think. And he goes, honestly, he goes, we have all these different clients, all the, you know, different products. He goes, ultimately it has to be what you want. He goes, and Steve jobs famously said, the consumer doesn't know what they want until you make it. Um, mm -hmm. cause you really never get inside their head. You can really never tell. They can tell you what they want, but they really don't know because you can give them exactly what they want and they can be like, this is nothing at all what I wanted. And you could be like, Oh, well you told me all of these things. So instead of doing sure. that, you take what they say. It's like having a wife. There you go. You take what they say and you're like, okay, ultimately, if I want this to be really good, if I'm creating it, if I'm the one doing it, ultimately it has to be what I want because that's the best thing they can get. That's the best thing your audience can get. Ultimately, it has to be what you want. And then again, and if they don't like it, it's fine. And if they do, great. But you're doing stuff that, you know – that your inner voice is telling you to do. And then uh, so much of it is out of your control. So much of it is, is out of your control. You just like, you show up every day, you do the work, you do work you care about, you're passionate about, and then let everything else take care of itself. Cause that's really all you can do. Paul Rubens. All right. Thank you for, thank you for inspiring us to be ourselves yeah. and, and to be weird. Um, inspired this podcast. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to end on a couple because it's the trade deadline is tomorrow. Um, Scherzer to the Rangers. Did you know that the Mets got Ronald Acuna Jr.'s brother in return? Yeah. That's interesting. Giolito to the Angels. Know. Angels are making moves, so it looks like Otani's not moving. Uh, Dave Robertson to the Marlins. Looks like the Cubs might be buyers, and obviously they've made a couple of moves thus far. Once they announced that Cody Bellinger was off the market, Jimmer Candelario came over. We obviously just mentioned that other acquisition as well. Jordan Montgomery to the Rangers. So the Rangers really loading up, um, especially with Ivaldi going on the IL. Jordan Hicks to the Blue Jays. Angels get outfielder uh, Randall Gritchunk and CJ Crone from the Rockies. And then Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly go to the Dodgers. So that's that's big for them for Trace Thompson. John, tell me this, John, and tell me if you agree. Um, when I see a lot of these acquisitions and trades and blah blah blah, it looks like a lot of shit to me. It looks like teams no impactful making moves. moves, making moves to make it look like you're busy. You know, like when your boss comes by and uh, and you start, hey, sure. yeah, I'm gonna start pressing buttons. It looks like they're pressing buttons, and I'm gonna give you this piece of shit and you give me this back and oh we're going for it we're not selling like what do we do what are you doing jamer candelario that's gonna help you make a push like and i understand you know there's, he, there's he has he has involved. some power they lack they lack power and then and, and i know he, but john come on let's be i serious agree here, but man. it's something he's not, he's not it's something. pushing the needle at all and it's not the only team there's a bunch of other acquisitions. i see these i know and i'm like what what is it? this is no news so what's the reason behind that it looks like these teams are just making to make it look like they're trying almost what do you think is why do you think they do this like to to really bolster their team or to justify their jobs or pressure from the fan base yeah, justify their jobs. Like, hey, we tried. We went and got a lefty bat, or we got right. a you know a right-handed reliever that we needed. It just didn't work out, and it's like, it's, well, it's you got dog you know. Shit. This speaks to like all the professional sports jobs. Like, you have those jobs for life, man. Like, you can't unless you like do something terrible. Like, sure, you, you just get moved you just around. moved around, just like those NFL coaches. Oh, he was a defensive coordinator. Now he's a special teams coach. Oh, he was he was good special teams coach. Now he's the defensive coordinator. Oh, he did really great this one year. Now he's a head coach. Okay, he was 
good for a, as a head coach for one year, then he was terrible. Now he's a special he assistant. Went to college. Yeah, it's like you have these jobs forever. You just like you. Just, your family has to be cool with moving a lot, but you're making a ton of money. So yeah, uh, I, I'm guessing that there are significant others probably don't have to work. So they're like, hey, whatever. I signed up for this. Uh, <laughs> I'm not packing. I'm not packing. I'm not doing any of this. Um, but yeah, like the, just. You know, there's like 30 GM jobs, and you know, and that's it. And they're so hard to get, and you literally like can't get fired. I mean, how bad was Dayton Moore for Kansas City for so long? I know he won a World Series, but that was like kind of a fluke. But you think people have these jobs for so long, and if they get fired, big deal. They just get a job immediately. John, I'm going to ask you uh, rapid fire real quick, Hit okay? Me. Um, only one team can advance from each division. Uh, who are you going with here? We're going to start with the AL East, Baltimore, Tampa Bay, Toronto, Boston, and Yankees. Who's coming out on top in that division? I think Baltimore. Baltimore looks dangerous. I also saw they might be a favorite for Verlander. That would be a very... That's not what I'm hearing. I, I heard that the Mets engaged in trade discussions with Dodgers and Astros per Bob Nightingale. Okay, Dodgers and Astros. Astros would get him back. I did see, uh, maybe it would said it, there was maybe some... I know Kate Upton wants to go to LA pretty bad. About uh, if he wants to go to Baltimore or not. AL Central, John, this seems pretty easy. I saw Cleveland already started selling pieces away. So Obviously the White Sox. Looks like Minnesota's coming on top there. Yeah, right? but not a threat to do anything in the playoffs. Correct. AL West, uh, Texas. Is Texas for real? It looks like Texas. I, I mean, they got a lot I, of arms. I think they Texas got a lot. Of I think arms. Texas is for real and they can hit too. Like yeah. they, and the, the moves that they made like Scherzer, Montgomery. And uh, yeah. And, th- and also they can, they have a lot of really good position players that can hit. Um, well, Runs per game, John. They're the best yeah. in baseball, more than the Braves. Runs per game, five point yeah. seven five. I think I think they're for real. I really I I really do. I I think the Astros are always going to be there as well. So like, don't count sure. don't count them out. But yeah, Angels. Uh, even with all the new acquisitions, no. I don't I don't, believe, think, I think, so. I don't think so. I don't think so because I just I don't know how healthy Crone? Trout is, and and also they have CJ no Crone not going to push. The they have no up. pitching. They don't have, it's the same story every year with this team. It's like Artie Marino. Okay, great. Spend $400 on a position player. It's like, bro, you need pitching, like spend right. money on pitching. Okay. Like spend a ton of money on a couple of premier one, two starters. And then at the trade deadline, trade your prospects to get some high leverage relievers. Yeah. Like that's all you have to do. Your lineup is great. You can score runs. If you have a healthy Mike Trout, you have the two best players in baseball. You also, by the way, you have Hunter Renfro, you have um, Rendon, you went healthy or whatever. You know, like, that, that's a good team. Yeah. Mickey Moniak. Seattle, huge disappointment coming out of the AL West. People had them to no, win that. No, I never believed in Seattle. Year. Not once. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know if I said it on the pod, but I was not a big uh, believer in that either. Obviously, it's easy to say that now. Uh, NL East is the most easy Braves. Uh, division of call. <laughs> they are egregiously the They're best so, team, John. I mean, they are so they, good, dude. Dude, when I watch Quick Pitch in the morning, and they're, yeah. I, I'm just like, I, I, I'm just like, holy shit, dude. Like Austin, like Albies, Austin Riley, Acuna Jr., no like Olsen. I'm like, my god, they just, mm. they, they just, they run you out of the ballpark. They just. Dude, they they mash. It's insane. They're so good. Let me ask you this, John. Since I am obviously uh, close to Philly now, the the, the Phillies. Eh. Now, do you think that there's any? No. Uh, if they get that last wild card spot, no. we see how hot they got in October last year with Nola and Wheeler. I think that's still a good one too. I think there's good value on them. Uh, if they get that last wild card spot, they obviously have to. Um, but they played some bad baseball recently. I'm just, we all just know, you know, when the time comes and a team gets hot, it's possible. I'm, they got the pieces. Sure. 
That's what you can ask for, right? Like you said, go out and get pitching from the Angels. They don't have the pieces. They don't have the... This is a team who maybe has underperformed, but they do have the right. pieces. Right. I, 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 they do have the pieces, but I just, I just don't think um... – I don't think they're going to be a repeat. I think last year was kind of an anomaly. I think it was very unique. They got really, really hot. I don't sure. think that's going to happen again. Um, I think I think a team that has underperformed is the Padres. I think the Padres, if they get in, they could easily be the Phillies of last year and go to the World Series. I mean, they're that good. How, however, like they, from what I have heard, they they're talking with other teams. I think I sent you this too. They've told to other teams that they would offer either Blake Snell, Juan Soto, or Josh Hader if the return makes sense, um, because AJ Preller is incapable of not making <laughs> any a move at the trade deadline. Like he has to do something. Sure. But um, but at the Padres, I think are super dangerous. And if they get in, they get that wild card spot because they're not going to get the Do- you know, the Dodgers will obviously get the NL West. Um, I think they could be very very dangerous. Like especially because yeah, they I have mean, you got two, two pesky teams in the Giants and the Diamondbacks in front of the Padres. Padres eight games back. They got. I mean, no, there's no guarantee that they grab that wild card spot either. Uh, obviously, we still got some time left here in the regular season. But what about the at, last one, John? NL Central. Ugh. Anybody's really pretty much a shit show. Well, there. it depends on games. how, you know, the Cubs have a huge four game series that literally they just started playing. I, I don't know the score, but they have a four game series, uh, at Wrigley four night games against the Reds. Um, and they have got to definitely win tonight. Uh, and probably, I mean, they have to win all the games too, but we'll really see. And then they, and then after that, they play the Braves. So this, so we'll, we'll 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 see we'll see if these if these transactions actually make a difference. But they have to win tonight, and they have to take at least three out of four from the Reds. And I'm kind of excited to see. Um, I'm kind of excited to see the Reds too. Like, how is Strowman yeah. gonna do? And and uh, it should be a great series. I'm literally after this podcast, I'm gonna go make dinner, put my son down, and watch it. Yeah, I don't want to sound like a shitty fan uh, because I do love the Cubs, but I also love exciting young teams uh, who are overperforming, like the Reds, especially when you have great talent like uh, Ellie De, De, La De La Cruz. Cruz. Yeah, they're way they're so, way more fun to watch than than the Cubs. Like I've I like yep, that Brewers like Red that. series the last couple of days. I've been tuning into that. And it's been awesome. Like the Reds are awesome. Yeah, <laughs> the Reds are really really good. No, I'm with you on that. John, tell everybody what our plan is. Did you already tell them what we're going to do for uh, for Hard Knocks? Yeah, so Hard Knocks, first episode. They've already started releasing a couple clips on Twitter, yeah. or X, uh, if you want to call oh it that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Dude, he, 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 he made such a shitstorm at work for me, because we have to rebrand every single... We have hundreds of social yeah, media pages. That. Everything has to change. That wherever that blue yeah. bird is, that has to change. Wherever yeah, any, wherever the word Twitter is, that has to change. So like, we're working with our agency to like do a, a massive audit. It's I'm just like, why? Why are you changing? Yeah, every everything like yeah that you have branded. Oh it's my Facebook god, logo. it's it's everywhere. It's, uh, it's on our website. Yeah. It's and it's on hundreds of social media sites that we have. It's on hundreds of social pages. Um, mm. But our agency will do pretty much most of that so i feel bad for them right. um but yeah so uh, t- uh premieres next tuesday i believe and then wednesday we will do a, a recap pod um each wednesday recapping uh each episode of hard knocks so really looking forward to that um seeing how awkward rogers comes across or if he is being really really fake um so people really don't know how weird he is even though we kind of we, we, i think we know uh so keep an eye out for our hard knocks Wednesday Wednesday evenings our pods will drop. John, last thing I saw Kay Adams tweeted something when I was coming home from the gym and she had a sit down with Aaron Rodgers. Don't know if you watched I did it, not. but he said uh, He likes Kay I Adams. for you, but they just said like how are your feelings towards everybody in Green Bay? And he's just like, Oh, those are my friends there. I talk to him every day. You know, uh, the chapter's closed for now. The epilogue will be written some other time, but blah, blah, blah. And she kind of was like, hmm, like, what does that mean? So I just want to leave that with you for some food for thought. He's not coming back to the Packers, which is fine. 
the dynasty is over for the Packers. Um, I've kind of resented the fact that I will be, you know, have the same feeling as a Bears fan. Like we're not going to be good for the rest of my life, which is fine. I've had a great run. I have no complaints. If we never win another yeah. Super Bowl, I've seen two with two Hall right. of Fame quarterbacks and a ton of wins in my first 36 years of life. No re- no regrets. I have yeah, lived. You're spoiled and privileged. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a Bears fan, you can totally you totally understand. So if we suck for the rest of my life, I, I do, I'll still be a Packer fan. It doesn't matter. I got I got mine. I got to see I got to see the best ever in their primes um, in the early part of my life. So anything else the Packers do is is gravy. Um, it's like basically growing up in Boston uh, the last twenty years. Pretty much, so. yeah. Yeah, it's just awesome. awesome. Yeah. So look right, forward to man. next Wednesday's pod. Next Wednesday's pod. Um, I put it on TikTok now as well. So if you want to watch live on TikTok, you don't have to wait till it drops tomorrow because I'm going to go watch a movie with my wife. What movie? But, John, I will see you next what movie? week, brother. I don't know. We start. I, I put on yesterday, I put on a How to Start a Cult. It's on Netflix. Dude, they talk I wanted to watch Manson. that. Is it good? Yeah, we, I just finished the first episode. Is it good? And like, it's good. Yeah. I Wait. Like so you don't what, you tomorrow. don't know what movie you're watching with your wife? What is it? Not yet. I had to do this. She was putting the baby down, and then we're gonna reconvene. Is it like net? Is, so do you go through Netflix or do you go to like Apple? Like, where do you go? Like, you know, if you're gonna watch a movie, where do you go? Uh, HBO Max, Netflix. Hulu, HBO Max has Disney. some legit movies. Yeah, sometimes. It's usually at the beginning of the month when they drop new Sweet. ones. But yeah. Okay, cool, dude. Well, enjoy. Give my love to the family. I'll let you know. All righty, guys. We'll see you later. Peace. And so-